of Luffy's forms explained. And first we gotta talk about the rarest form in the entire show, Luffy's nightmare form. In episode 370, a group of pirates forced a hundred souls into Luffy's body, mutating him into this buffer and deadlier creature. His skin was blue, he lost his famous smile, and some fans even think this is one of his strongest forms. Cause with his cursed body, Luffy was able to destroy this zombie monster. But the nightmare form is his rarest for a reason. Cause after just 10 minutes, all the shadows left Luffy's body and returned him to normal, making this the only time we've ever seen this version of Luffy. But from rare to weird, we have to talk about Luffy's next form. See, in episode 217, Luffy needed a secret weapon to win a duel against the pirate Foxy. So Usopp gave him this afro, saying it would wake up Luffy's deepest powers and make his punches deadlier. Now most fans think Usopp was telling the truth because Afro Luffy actually won the fight, but some of the smarter fans realized there was more to the story since some of the strongest characters like Blackbeard, Aokiji, and Brook also have afros. And this created the fan theory that the afro haircut might be a secret way to get stronger. Now we've got Luffy's strongest form coming later in the video, but first we gotta talk about the one form that doesn't make any sense, Water Gun Luffy. See, normally Luffy just throws punches and kicks at his enemies, but in his fight against the warlord Crocodile, Luffy chose an odd strategy, filling up his stretchy stomach with an entire barrel of water and then shooting it at Crocodile like a water gun. Now it turns out that Luffy didn't win this fight, but since we got this hilarious form, I'm not complaining. <laughs> and in episode 578, we got Luffy's most disturbing form. Cause during a fight, Luffy accidentally swallowed Lily the Glutton, a girl with the ability to change her size at will. Now normally, Lily sneaks into her enemy's throats so that she can expand inside their body and then blows them up. But since Luffy is stretchy, he was able to expand with her and that's how his giant form was created. In addition, to being huge, this version of Luffy is also way stronger since he was able to take a rocket to the back of the head with zero damage. The weirdest part is that Lily is inside his body, which explains the horns on his head since she was wearing a helmet when Luffy accidentally swallowed her. Now the next form is where things get interesting, because it's the first ever power upgrade that Luffy got in the show, Gear Second. This form speeds up Luffy's blood flow to make him way faster, and boy does it work. Cause Gear Second Luffy is so fast that even skilled fighters have a hard time seeing him. The craziest part is that only Luffy can use it, because this form causes a huge spike in blood pressure that would kill a normal human. But since Luffy can stretch, his body can expand to handle the pressure. However, Gear Second does have a deadly downside, because if Luffy uses it for too long, his energy gets completely drained and he can't move for the next 15 minutes. Meaning that if he doesn't time this power right, he could use it wrong and get paralyzed in a fight. Now Gear Second is pretty cool, but it's nothing compared to Gear Third. See, while fighting a secret agent in episode 304, Luffy realized that Gear Second wasn't enough to win the fight. So he invented Gear Third, which takes advantage of his rubber bones. By biting his thumb and blowing into it, Luffy can pump air directly into his bones, making them much bigger. This version of Luffy is so strong that he can destroy a marine battleship in a single hit. But this power also comes with a massive problem, and it caused the next form on this list. See, when Gear 3 Luffy wanted to return to his normal size, he had to exhale all the air from his bones, but since his body could handle changing size that quick, it would shrink too much until he's the size of a kid. The longer he spent in gear third form, the longer he'd be stuck in the shrunken form I'm calling Mini Luffy. However, this downside slowly disappeared as Luffy got stronger. Now Luffy's hockey form is next, and this is where his power levels start going crazy. See, between episode 516 and 517, the anime skipped about two years, and during this time, Luffy learned three forms of hockey, which is a spirit spiritual energy you can use to enhance your abilities. The first hockey technique that Luffy learned was Conqueror's Hockey, which allows him to freeze or knock out weaker enemies with willpower alone. An example is Shanks scaring off this sea monster way back in the beginning of the anime. This type of hockey is incredibly rare, 
and you can't learn it. You're either born with it or you're not. The second hockey technique is observation hockey, which gives Luffy the ability to predict his enemy's next move. This is my favorite because if mastered, you can technically avoid every single attack from even the most powerful enemies. Armament hockey is the third technique, and with it, Luffy can use his spiritual energy to create armor-like protection on his body. Now, most One Piece characters will never master a form of hockey, let alone all three. But Luffy broke records by mastering all three forms in just two years. And we gotta talk about Luffy's plot armor form. See, back in episode 183, Luffy had to fight the lightning man, Enel, who's literally a god. What made it even worse is that Enel's observation hockey was so powerful, he could practically read your mind. So how do you fight someone who knows exactly what you're thinking? You don't think. And that's exactly what Luffy did, creating this brainless form and putting his life in the hands of his reflexes. <laughs> and plot armor. Gear 4 is Luffy's next form, and it builds on top of hockey to create three insane techniques. The first is Snake Man, which works by applying armament hockey to just his arms and legs, increasing his strength and making him extremely quick. What makes this form powerful is that when Luffy throws a punch, his fist continues speeding up until it hits the target. And the perfect example of this form is when Luffy fought this guy, who was originally too fast for Luffy. But when Luffy used Snake Man, the longer this enemy was able to dodge, the stronger the attack got. Unfortunately, Snake Man only uses armament hockey on the arms and legs, so it doesn't have great defense. Which is where his next Gear 4 technique comes in, Bound Man. Luffy first invented this technique when he had to fight 500 giant beasts. This form is so powerful that Luffy can destroy a mountain with one punch, which is a huge upgrade from the strength Gear 3rd gave him. But it gets even crazier, because by mixing this technique with his Gear 2nd speed, Luffy can fly, or technically bounce around. And while that sounds unstoppable, the same thing that makes him fly is also his downfall, since he literally can't stop in this form. As you can see, his proportions are completely warped, meaning Luffy has no control over his movement, and when he hits the ground, he'll just take off again. And that brings us to the funniest Gear 4th technique, Tank Man. Or, as I like to call it, Fat Luffy. This is the rarest form, because we've only seen it once so far when Luffy fought Charlotte Cracker. In this fight, Charlotte's Cracker soldiers were destroying Luffy, so he decided to try a different strategy, eating the soldiers. He ate so many of them, this is what he looked like. And when he activated his Gear 4th, Tank Man was born, a technique that uses his big belly to create an unbeatable defense. Swords, punches, and any other attacks just can't get past his big hockey and force stomach. Unfortunately, there is a downside, because in the Tank Man form, Luffy can barely move, which kind of explains why we've only seen it once. Now, before we talk about Luffy's strongest form, we gotta talk about his weakest. Because before Luffy ever unlocked Gear 2nd, 3rd, or 4th, he was stuck in his base form for almost 300 episodes. Now, most people think this means his base form was weak, but during this time, Luffy fought so many people, he actually got pretty strong. Like, he was in this base form in his fight against Enel, the god, and still won. And in his battle against Captain Kuro, he was still able to win even though Kuro specialized in blades, which was Luffy's weakness at the time. Now, let's talk about the form that literally broke One Piece. Luffy's ultimate Gear 5 that basically makes him invincible. See, Gear 5th was developed after Luffy literally died while fighting Kaido. Somehow while lying on the battlefield, Luffy was able to restart his heart and the sheer trauma of this experience unlocked a special phase of Luffy's Devil Fruit called Awakening. This new phase revealed that Luffy's Devil Fruit was never actually the Gum Gum Fruit. It was the human human fruit model Nika, an extremely rare devil fruit that had the ability to turn the user into the sun god Nika. Nika was an ancient warrior who fought an extreme extremely creative ways to liberate slaves from their masters and always brought smiles to people's faces. But there seems to be a lot of mystery surrounding this person and we don't know if he was actually real or just a myth. 
the world government really doesn't want us to know the truth. And that's why when the government had this devil fruit in their possession, they changed the name to hide its power. This awakened devil fruit grants Luffy increased speed, defense, and strength greater than any of his previous forms. Gear 5 also allows Luffy to apply the properties of rubber not only to himself, but to everything around him. According to Kaido during their fight, Luffy's Gear 5 abilities were like something out of a picture book. The creator of One Piece revealed the only thing limiting Luffy in this form is his own imagination, so he's pretty much invincible. But Gear 5 is also dangerous to Luffy because if he stays in the form for too long, it drains his life force. Now that's crazy, but uh, Luffy's got more forms, like the time he transformed into Champion Luffy in his fight against a guy called Magellan. This dude was crazy strong, with the power to either summon a beast made out of deadly poison or the ability to cover his body in it. The poison is so dangerous that last time it touched Luffy, he nearly died. So to defeat Magellan, Luffy partnered up with a guy called Mr. Three to create the Champion Luffy form. See, Mr. Three has wax powers, so he coated Luffy's arms and legs with thick wax armor that's as strong as steel when it hardens. With this protection, Luffy was actually able to attack Magellan without touching his poison for a bit. Now, Luffy's craziest form is one that hasn't even showed up in the anime or the manga. See, a couple years ago, the creator of One Piece released a form of Luffy with two versions. The first showed Luffy in 40 years if he ended up discovering the One Piece. As you can see, he looks extremely strong and kind of resembles his grandpa Garp. The second version, though, is depressing, since it shows Luffy if he never ends up finding the One Piece. This guy is missing teeth, is almost completely bald, and just looks like a drunk old man. I don't know when One Piece is going to end, but I really hope we don't get this form. But that's not even the craziest thing in One Piece. Click this video to see what would happen if Luffy had to fight his Straw Hat crew. Click it.